starting with the Smash Brothers Roundup. So there has been actually like a lot of Smash related news in the last four months. Like, you know, compared to uh, like the time between uh, when I started this show and uh, episode six in September, there was like two characters and that was it. Now we've had two more just in this four month span and a controversy that we're going to be talking about today. So let's start with the characters first. The first character to be released in between uh, episode six and today is, and I, I, I still cannot believe this, the second character of Fighters Pass Volume 2 is Steve from Minecraft. Which, with also costumes for Alex, which is apparently the female avatar for the game, um, as well as a zombie, which is, uh, I believe they're called mobs in the game, and an Enderman, which is another one. So, if I already have not made it obvious, I... Okay, I was surrounded by people who play Minecraft. I'm still surrounded to an extent by people who played Minecraft. And I know it's like, really, it's a kind of a revolutionary, amazing game. I'm just not really that into it. That's just me. I think I might have briefly talked about this offhandedly in another uh, episode, but really I can, I would imagine that might be a better topic, like a, to make a whole topic another time, why it's like how I wasn't so much into Minecraft. That could be a good, like, probably guest topic to get someone uh, in who really does enjoy it, but I digress. So, um, Steve in Smash Brothers. This was something that people like brought up kind of like as a uh like a a meme of sorts like oh yeah you know like it's the like the there goes the neighborhood once steve is in smash so to speak and really uh, like the reaction to steve was a lot more like explosive than i thought it would be there were people who predictably were like oh my god mind blown and i totally get that those are probably mostly people my age and then you had people who are older uh, generally and then me who was really like oh my god this is stupid this is the dumbest thing i've ever heard in fact one of the things that shocked me uh considering that she is someone who likes minecraft good bit is uh, again my guest from uh now the creative outlet bonus episode one parts one and two lex she really thought it was pretty dumb and i was kind of shocked about it since she likes uh minecraft but the thing about steve is that they're like with every character even for someone like Byleth, uh, there's still some significance in bringing them into Smash. And I know there's some people who really don't like thinking of Smash uh, the way that other people do now, where it's kind of like a gaming hall of fame in a way. But I still still do genuinely think there's always some significance in having each character in Smash, and Steve is no different. And, you know, even though I may not care, the way that I looked at... Um, Steve getting into Smash Brothers was it would be like if in Smash 64 they didn't put Pikachu and Jigglypuff in there. It'd be like not having Pokemon. Pokemon in the mid-90s and even still kind of today, it was like ubiquitous. You could not go very far without hearing people talking about Pokemon. Just like how if you were in middle school, when I was in middle school, in like 2011, 2012, that sort of time, you couldn't walk around without hearing people talk about Minecraft, because it was the thing, right? So, I, I really, as much as I don't really care for it, and as much as I think people of older generations really don't care for it, and still, as strange as it is, particularly now with Minecraft being... A Microsoft property and yet still also kind of an independent thing it's in this weird spot um, I almost feel like it's a matter of time before a character like Steve would get into uh, Super Smash Brothers um, now typically one of the things we talk about with uh, these presentations we also talk about the the move set and, and Steve's move set is particularly interesting and again uh, with Steve and the character that I'm going to talk about next, I can't really comment on them too much other than, like, 
it's pretty neat because you know unlike uh, Min Min for example I or uh, Banjo even I have I, I know, like I said I know very little about Minecraft uh, even then I really didn't know a lot about um, I don't really know a lot about Fire Emblem either so I kind of tried talking about the move set with Byleth but I also couldn't give a very in-depth analysis. Um, but I find Steve's moveset for the little bit that I have interacted with Minecraft to be pretty, you know, pretty obviously faithful to the games. Like, his basic attacks are the sword. Duh. His uh, neutral B is mining. And then if you're in front of a crafting table, it is crafting. I mean, after all, it is Minecraft. So you're literally getting the materials and changing your tools, so like that sword that I just talked about, into a higher quality tool. So you start with, I think it's like a wooden sword and like a wooden pickaxe and a regular axe. I, I mean, I, it's been a while since I've played as Steve in particular uh, as well, um, just in the game. You, you're basically taking those tools and you're going from wood to like iron and then to... I think one of them is gold, and then the last one is uh, diamond level. And, you know, otherwise you're gaining materials, like uh, you'll need some materials to make your down special, which is TNT, which you can even draw, like, a line of, I believe it's called redstone, with a switch to walk on that and make your TNT blow up from afar, uh, which that's a really interesting spot. Uh, down special. I like it a lot. I think it's very uh, helpful. Uh, as far as like other moves, I mean, most of them, like there's none that I feel like are particularly amazing. The down spe the the down smash is pretty good. The bucket of um, lava, although I find the up special to be per or not the up special, the up smash um, to be the best of the smash attacks. Or you like make this. It's like a, I can't remember exactly what the material is called, but you're basically making a lava block above you. And if people hit it, they'll be stuck there, and then you swipe at them again with your pickaxe, and they fly away. Um, as far as the side special, it's pretty neat. It reminds me a lot of... Oh, goodness, there's another special that's kind of like it. Or it might be... I might be thinking of... Like, I know it's very similar to Cap'n's assist trophy uh it's kind of like bowser's side special and also like corin's in that you're trapping the other fighter in it but with steve with the minecart because that's what the side special is you can use it to actually carry people away and the reason it's like corin's is i remember in like the video uh trailer for him you could like uh you could use his side special where he stabs into like one of the rolling crates well, I guess it's not exactly the same. Eh, it's really not all that important. It's it's just it's 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 neat. It's cool. Oh, hit the table. Um, and it's it's also really good for having some uh, horizontal recovery. Although his up special is pretty good for that too, in that it's like he basically lights a rocket. I mean, you can use it to go in any direction. If you wanted to go up, you can go up. If you can use it to go horizontally, and he basically has like a hang glider sort of thing. It's it's okay. That's the thing about Steve, is ultimately I find he is okay as a character. And some of that even comes from things like his jump. His basic jump is by far the lowest in the game. It can't even reach one of the low platforms on Battlefield, which is crazy to me. You would think that, that would be the basic requirement for any Smash character, is that there, if you hit X or Y or if you are a weirdo and you tap jump, gross, but I digress, uh, that you'd be able to jump up to a pretty low platform like that. But no, you actually have to double jump to get on it, which is crazy, uh, in my opinion. But ultimately not all that important. Um, so, yeah, th th that's my impression of Steve, is that he's okay. The stage is just called Minecraft World. Some people were really hoping it would be called, I think it was like My World, because that's like the generic name for your Minecraft um, worlds in the game. 
which would have been, I, I think it would have been better too. The more references is more references is generally better in my opinion, uh, as far as stuff like that. Um, but it comes in a number of different biomes. There's like a a basic grassy biome. There's a, a, a wintry biome. There's kind of a, a, a deserty biome, and it picks a random one at the start of the match, unless uh, there is a button combination that you can do that Sakurai shared. I don't have it pulled up in front of me, uh, but each different button combination determines which biome you get. Though this would be a great, great place to bring up the picture, and then you know you can visually look at. Hey, I can press like I don't know R in a direction on the stick something like that to determine which one you get if you want to play that stage. Um, of course, the the uh, Battlefield and Final Destination versions are just generic. They're, I'm pretty sure the biome are the same. Uh, apparently, one of the big challenges for Steve in bringing him into the game uh, has to do with all of the stages, because now all of the stages essentially had to be completely retooled to have different materials come up for when he's doing his neutral B to do, uh, or to get, uh, materials. You know, some stages are, like, very heavy in iron, if you look at essentially what it's made of, or some are heavier in rock, or some are heavier in, like, they would do wool for something like magic hand, even though you don't really use wool for, uh, any crafting for Steve as a character. Uh, in Smash, I should say, obviously, you use, you, you, you do use wool to an extent for something, um, in, uh, in Minecraft. Uh, which is really interesting because that makes, that makes, especially since the stage is picked beforehand, that makes it a lot harder, or that makes it a lot more strategic with whether you choose to play as Steve or not, since you picked the stage first. Like, maybe Steve is such a great choice on Magicant because, oh man, it's going to be harder to get diamonds and get my really powerful tools, but he's a better choice in something, in a stage like, god, I don't know... Uh, maybe the Great Cave Offensive? Because that one's very, like, jewel-y and gemmy and full of rocks. So you would potentially be able to get more drops of those higher, uh, uh, higher density and power materials. But otherwise, if you're doing, just doing a Final Destination or a Battlefield stage, or I'm pretty sure if you're doing the Minecraft world itself as well, they're just, like, they're more or less randomly shuffled, or they're based on, I think with the Minecraft it, world, it's, I believe it's based on the biome, essentially, uh, what all you're more likely to get and what you're not likely to get. And Again, some of that depends on the surface you're standing on, too, because you could have stages like, um, uh, like, I think, is it, I'm pretty sure it's called Winnet, is the stage. I know it's based on Winnet from Earthbound, but for whatever reason, I'm blanking on the stage name. Um, like, if you were standing in the tree in the stage, you'd be more likely to get wood, whereas if you're standing on the ground, you're more likely to get dirt, whereas if you're standing on the roofs, maybe you'll get more like stone, because, you know, roofs are made of tiles. Uh, so that is Steve as a character. Again, another big thing from it were the reveal of the final amiibo figures for Fighters Pass 1. Uh, if you can see in the background, you'll see that I have some of my amiibo, like, now hanging on the wall. That's for a separate reason, because I would really like to take them out of the box and use them. <sighs> uh, but I do have Joker and Hero, which were the first two characters for the, uh, Fighter's Pass. Uh, but now Banjo, Terry, and Byleth are now revealed and should be releasing uh, later this year. I can't remember the exact date. I really should have been prepared for this um, uh, in piece of information because it's a pretty obvious piece. They will be releasing in, uh, it says March, yes, March 26th. 2021 so you can bet that they will be added to my collection as well especially banjo i am excited for that it's like it's still honestly mind-blowing that they are really truly honestly in the game like that banjo and kazooie are in the game that is just like i can't believe i can't i cannot believe it i cannot believe it i cannot believe it
Um, the only other thing I want to talk about as far as um, uh, the Steve portion of this Smash Roundup are the uh, uh, Pack 7 costumes, the Mii costumes. And uh, there really wasn't anything uh, too terribly super exciting. There were three uh, Minecraft themed costumes in the in this set. So there was one based on a creeper, which again is another basic uh, enemy that you fight. It's like well, more or less the mascot. It's even in like the logo for the A, its face. There's a complete set of diamond armor, complete with the sword as well as the helmet. Uh, there's one that turns you into the pig. You know, just an animal that I believe you get for food. And then the, the three that were more interesting to me, uh, of course, were the... Uh, so there's Gil, which is from the Tower of Druaga, which is a classic Na uh, Namco uh, arcade game. Uh, there's Bomberman, which is huge because Bomberman's already an assist trophy in the game. I still don't get why Bomberman isn't a character, but... It's no big deal. There's already plenty of characters, and I, there's Artie Banjo. Uh, that's still so, so amazing. And what's cool about the Bomberman me fighter costume is it is it does something like many of the other like basic looking ones do. Kind of like the I think the business suit is one that does this, for example, where certain elements of the costume change depending on what your Mii's favorite color is. So in this case for Bomberman, if your Mii's favorite color is white, it'll look like the classic white Bomberman that everyone knows. If your favorite color for your Mii is red, it will be the red Bomberman. If it's yellow, it'll be the yellow Bomberman, etc, etc. And then the final one is, uh, the final Mii Fighter costume is uh, Travis touchdown from no more heroes and again kind of like when the vault boy from fallout was included it didn't actually say that it was super smash brothers x no more heroes it was x travis because i'm guessing if they mentioned no more heroes the rating for the game would go up i have no idea it's pretty strange but alas uh it doesn't matter so much because they are in the game so that should cover uh, everything Steve-related, which means we need to move on to the next uh, set of characters, which, or the next character, I should say, which came completely out of left field to me. I mean, it was pretty obvious as far as, like, this should be a character in Smash, but it wasn't one that I was expecting, and that is Severoth from Final Fantasy VII. So, for Smash 4, Cloud Strife, which is the protagonist of Final Fantasy VII, was added as DLC, and he came back for uh, Ultimate just in the base game. Apparently, he was one of the harder characters to get back. It seems like Square Enix, for whatever reason, just, just like a real pain to work with as far as characters and music and stuff, although, uh, and Sakurai even talked about that, um, in the Sephiroth full-on presentation, where it's like, they're, like, you know, getting the, the, the things like the music can be a real pain when you're talking about how, really, a lot of the music is held by different licenses, um, if it wasn't something that was like the 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 publisher made sure to make sure that this music is our property, um, and you can even see that with say Hero as well for from from Dragon Quest because, and this is a whole separate digression, but uh, the Dragon Quest music is done by Koichi Sugiyama, and he's a, I mean. <laughs> I recommend watching the Stop Skeletons from Fighting video about the Dragon Quest XI music because they, they really did a lot better description than I can do here. But essentially, one of the big things for Sugiyama is that he believes that the in-game version of the music, that he wants to keep doing the MIDI versions instead of doing orchestral versions of the music because then that's going to cause people to be like, man, I really want to hear the orchestral version of this because that probably sounds a lot better and wouldn't you know it, He's released CDs and records and is doing concerts of the Dragon Quest music with a real orchestra. 
Um, so that's kind of a pretty uh, lame and terrible practice, especially if you're someone who, you know, doesn't live in Japan and wouldn't be able to really, you know, easily consume these things, um, which is why the Smash versions of the Dragon Quest music are still the MIDI versions. But I digress. Sometimes things like that get through, like, um, I believe the international version of Dragon Quest VIII had uh, orchestrated music, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really getting off in, <laughs> in the weeds here. Uh, we should get back to talking about Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. So this character, uh, we knew that there was going to be a character revealed at the Game Awards for 2020, because literally Nintendo put out a post being like, hey, get ready for the Game Awards, there's going to be a new Smash character shown, just like how, that's how uh, Joker was revealed for um, the, the original Fighter's Pass. Um, and the trailer was really, really cool. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, I've never played a Final Fantasy game, especially Final Fantasy VII. So I didn't... I'll, very similarly to when Cloud was revealed, I was watching it like, okay... I feel like there's, like, if I were a fan of this, I would be picking up on something here, and then I would be, like, really, like... Oh my god! Kind of like in the Banjo trailer when... I'm sorry, I really keep going back to Banjo here. But like, you know, when you saw that Jiggy hopping across screen, that was a heart-stopping moment. Like, what? Is that what I think it is? And lo and behold, it was. Um, but in this case, it's like, you know, if you are a fan of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII and you see... Uh, Galim just go shing, and he's suddenly here. Dun, dun. I won't go very far because I don't need anything happening with the music. But you start hearing the first like couple of notes of One Winged Angel. You're like that. That's you'd have the same reaction I had to seeing that jiggy hopping across screen the screen in Banjo's trailer. Um, first I want to point out the thing that ultimately makes us the uh, worst of the Fighter Pass 2 presentations, which is that it was not in Sakurai's house and instead was ba back in the basic boring looking office. Okay, really, that isn't a big deal. I just thought it was cool for Min Min and for Steve. God, I didn't mention that with Steve. Those two presentations were in Sakurai's house, but I did talk about it in the Min Min portion, uh, the Min Min uh, uh, segment, that it was in Sakurai's house, and that was just cool. And people were like, man, look at that. There's a listing a listing on the internet for the couch that he has, which is pretty weird. Uh, people are weird. I just thought it was cool to see, like, he has two TVs next to each other and all the gazillion game consoles and... Again, I'm getting off track here. Uh, let's talk about Sephiroth. So, kind of like with Steve and his significance, Sephiroth has his own type of significance as far as Smash. And that um, was really properly bringing Final Fantasy into Smash Brothers. So, kind of like I talked about with uh, earlier, going on that huge digression about the music, one of the problems when Cloud was released for Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U was only two songs came with him. So you basically got Cloud, you got Midgar, and you got two songs. And they needed at least two songs because the 3DS version only had two songs for each stage. Um, and even then, none of the songs were remixes either. They were all the original straight out from Final Fantasy VII on the PS1 songs. Well, for this, uh, Sakurai and his team and Nintendo really went all out and did the extra legwork to make sure that, you know, they could bring the music, like many more tracks to Final, from Final Fantasy VII to Smash Brothers and um, some other aspects as well. So now there are 11 songs in the game, and I believe some of them are remixes. If they're not, and they're all just like from their original pieces, uh, you've got some from Final Fantasy VII, and you've also got some from Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, which is the movie uh, that followed up on uh, Final Fantasy VII. As far as like other elements uh, where they went the extra mile in bringing Final Fantasy VII into Smash, um, Originally, when the game launched, the only Final Fantasy spirits in the game were just the ones for Cloud. And even then, for Cloud, so there's one for his basic costume and one for his Advent Children costume. But the 
basic costume didn't even have his, like, because all of the characters, you can switch their spirit from being, like, the Smash Brothers art to, like, an original version of the art. Like, uh, I don't know, what's a good example? And, you know, instead of Mario doing his new render and his pose for Smash Brothers, instead you're seeing him, you know, just doing, like, a, a you know, Mario jumping pose. It's some render of Mario. And they didn't have that for Cloud. So when they did this update, now Cloud actually does have his artwork, and Sephiroth has his artwork as well as his, uh, you know, his new render. And now there are spirits for all of the party members, as well as like a couple of other important characters from Final Fantasy VII. And then there's like a Moogle and a Chocobo and all that. You know, the things that are like iconic from Final Fantasy all have spirits now. So. True, I would say Final Fantasy is now truly in Smash Brothers as it should have been back when Cloud was released. Although I can't, you know, I can't be too upset. Uh, as they say, it's better late than never. As far as talking about Sephiroth's move set, yeah, I think he's pretty neat. I feel like Sephiroth is a character that has a lot of potential, but not. Like, but it's very hard to execute it. So, for example, uh, you know, he has this really gigantic sword called the Masamune. And uh, kind of like Marth and Roy, a certain part of the sword has a sweet, sweet spot. So, as far, so like for some, for like the, the swinging attacks, I believe it's like the center of the sword. Whereas for stabbing attacks, it's the tip of the sword. And... Like, they have a pretty slow wind-up, not too dissimilarly from Ike, who also has, like, not... Like, Sephiroth has a very long, thin sword. Ike just has a very big sword. <laughs> um, and some of, those, some of the attacks do really neat things as well. Like, uh, I think the down special sticks out. I mean, you know, the up special and, like, the forward special... Or, not special, smashes. The s forward smash, the up smash are pretty basic, like... Uh, Fwa, swing forward, and a fwa, do like an arc. Whereas the down smash, he actually stabs it in uh, the Masamune in the ground, and it causes a little, like, not quite an eruption, but it, like, throws some ground, like some dirt up, which can hit your enemies, which I think is pretty neat if you don't just stab them initially. <laughs> um, and then with uh, specials, there's some neat stuff. So, like, the up special isn't your traditional, like, big jump or, like, flying sort of thing. Like, you'd expect the up special to do something with um, Sephiroth being the one-winged angel with his one wing. But they actually don't really do anything with that. Uh, instead, that is... I can't remember the name of the basic version, but the charged version is the uh, the Octa Slash, so he does eight slashes, Octo eight slashes, um, and that just propels him forward, and you can just do it, and you can pick the direction it goes in. Um, the down special is called the Scintilla. It's kind of like a counter, kind of like a reflector, which is interesting. Like, either way, whether it hits or not, it does the reflective, like it makes like a little shield, and it goes... <laughs> And it's, it's kind of useful, like, if you can counter with it, but it only really hits if the character is close. Um, I think the side special is probably one of his, one of his most interesting um, bits. And, God, it is really bugging me that I cannot remember these names of things. Um, but essentially what it does is it... Uh, like, he kind of snaps his fingers, and it shoots out a little laser beam sort of looking thing. And, uh, let's see, it... Oh, oh, what? Okay, here it is. The shadow flare, the shadow flare is what it's called, and it creates, like, a, a ball that surrounds the character, that, that, or the fighter that it hits, and that character then uh, will inevitably get uh, the ball, and it, it, it I mean, it, it doesn't, like, do anything too terrible to them, it just really just does a little bit of damage, but you can build on top, like, over and over, and get 
like up to five of those energy balls rotating around him and hit it like five times. Um, I just just think it's pretty neat. Uh, The regular version of the up special is called the blade dash. Um, And so the stand, like the, the, the neutral special is the one that I think is the most interesting. So it's it comes in three different types, the flare, the mega flare, and the giga flare, depending on how long you hold down the button. And essentially it is just like a big old kind of like uh Samus's charge shot where it does a if it hits it does a big old explosion and it's just it's really, really powerful. Um uh, as far as other things, uh, Sephiroth actually has a pretty interesting classic mode compared to some of the other characters. So Sephiroths are all just bosses. So you start with the Rath- Rathalos, uh, which is the giant enemy from Monster Hunter, like essentially the mascot. Um, you go up against Gallium, which is one of the major bosses from, of all things, the Subspace Emissary in Brawl. Uh, you go up against Marx, who's, uh, spoiler, is the final boss of Kirby Superstar. Uh, you go up against Dracula from Castlevania, Ganon uh, from The Legend of Zelda, and then you go up against Giga Bowser and end off with Master Hand and Crazy Hand. So it's, like, essentially, you're basically forced to play a Sephiroth in order to get a boss rush if you wanted a uh, a boss rush. Um, I guess I didn't really talk about the final smash for Steve. I should really talk about that, too. Uh, the final smash for Steve and for Sephiroth. Since we're on Sephiroth, we'll talk about his first, and then we'll quickly backpedal over to Steve's. So Sephiroth's final smash is the Supernova. So essentially he swings his sword. It's one of those ones where it's like you have to be within a range. Like the other character you hit has to be within a certain range to um, uh, be within this final smash. And then the it, it's one of those cutscene type smashes. So he turns into this giant godlike looking uh, character or version called Safer Sephiroth. And he uses the supernova spell, which is uh, supposed to summon meteor, which is essentially what he is trying to do in Final Fantasy VII, is destroy the planet with the meteor. And um, but in this case, he's using meteor as his final smash to uh, defeat or like you know inflict a ton of damage on these characters. And the cutscene's really wild. You know, it's, there's all these like equation-looking things, and a bunch of planets get destroyed, and eventually you get destroyed. But not really, unless you actually get KO'd from it. Um, Steve's... What is Steve's actually called? Uh, I don't know what the official title for his final smash is off the top of my head. I really should know that. It is called... Oh, come on, where is it? The House of Boom, which is appropriate. So... um, for Steve, he lays out a huge piston. Apparently, that must be something that you can build in Minecraft. And then he activates it, and it pushes... It only can get one character in there, so it pushes one character into, uh, like, a house sort of thing that just so happens to be filled up with uh, creepers and TNT. Okay, cool. And um, so then the house blows up, and... Then we get to go look outside of the structure and see Steve eat a steak for a ton, and the house explodes, and that's the final smash. It's not really like a, um... It's not really like a super powerful final smash. It's really just a funny final smash. That's what I like about Steve's, uh, the most. Uh, as far as, like, special things yet about Sephiroth, uh, before we talk about, like, the stage and the meat costumes and all that stuff, uh... He does have a shirtless costume, kind of like how Shulk has a like a, an underwear <laughs> costume, basically, um, and that's a reference to uh, his appearance in Final Fantasy VII when he's like stuck in a crystal for whatever reason. Again, I haven't played the game. I don't really remember a ton of the synopsis that Sakurai talked about Final Fantasy VII, um, but that's the basic idea. Um, as far as um, the stage, so his stage is the Northern Cave, is what it's called, and it's 
basically where the final boss fight of Final Fantasy VII takes place, where you're literally, like, it, it's kind of like a traveling stage, but not because the stage layout itself doesn't change. You're just traveling on these couple platforms into a crater, down, going down, 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 um, until you reach um, the area where the final battle would take place. Um, no, I don't need to see this ad. I want to learn more about the stage so I can talk about it better. Thank you, Mario Wiki. Yes, I'm using the Mario Wiki for something not about Mario. Um, yeah, tours you through, like, the sort of ending through the game. You go through the crater. Um, you're descending through it, and, um, you see, like, as, uh, as the deepest point where you go to, you get to see... Uh, where the magic spell of Holy has been sealed, which is what's supposed to stop Meteor from destroying uh, the planet. And you're following the, it says it's called the High Wind. That's like, there's a ship traveling in the background. That must be the High Wind. Um, and it f quickly flies out of the crater um, as you've finally stopped uh, Meteor, which is going to end up destroying, you know, the world. And... Um, you know, it's essentially what you're seeing is just the final events of Final Fantasy VII, and I'm sure all of the big Final Fantasy VII fans in my audience right now are just really mad at me for not knowing the game, and I'm sorry. As far as me fighter costumes for uh, Pack 8, uh, most of them were... Actually, no, I don't think all of them were Final Fantasy themed, but all of them were Square Enix themed in a way. So three of them were three of Cloud's other party members. There's one based off of Barrett, um, who is the gunner of the crew. He literally has like a Gatling gun for an arm. Uh, there's one for Tifa. Uh, so we have a gunner costume. Tifa is a brawler costume. And then there's Aerith, who is a sword fighter costume. She has a, it's not like a sword. It was like a giant, like sort of stick thing. Um, there's a chocobo hat that you can just use on any type of me fighter, uh, since chocobos are essentially the mascot of the series. That costume came with Cloud in Smash for Wii U, so again, another repeated DLC costume that I didn't want to pay 75 cents for again when it should have been in the base game. And then the last one was another Square Enix costume, but it wasn't Final Fantasy, it wasn't Dragon Quest, it was... And I'm so sorry for you fans, but I called this um, when Sephiroth was revealed. It is Gino from Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars as a Mii Gunner costume. Sorry once more to Gino fans who don't actually have Gino as a character in the game. So, there's only one other aspect of... Sephiroth I want to talk about, and that is the Sephiroth Challenge. So this was a special thing that was talked about at the end of uh, the present of the presentation for Sephiroth that I thought was, re was really cool. So normally, or well, like Sakurai talked about, Sephiroth will be released on December 23rd, oh, it's like Christmas Eve Eve, I think he said, of 2020. But the update for Sephiroth came out the day of the presentation because what you could do if you had already purchased Challenge Pack 8 or just or had purchased the whole Fighter's Pass Volume 2 like I did is you could play in the Sephiroth Challenge and all you really had to do in that was it was a one-on-one -on -one, uh, battle um, a stamina battle against Sephiroth uh, where uh, you take him on, and if you beat him on any of the difficulties, there's easy, normal, and very hard, you unlock him as a character, and you get to play on the Northern Cave, and you get all the music early. But other aspects of the update weren't available yet. There weren't, the spirits weren't out yet. Um, uh, probably the big one, actually, or, well, not really a big one, it's a really little thing, and another aspect that gets into that idea of properly bringing Final Fantasy VII to Smash, uh, was they didn't have... Uh, Cloud's Advent Children costume has its own separate final smash of Omni slash version 5 from the movie. That wasn't available. So essentially you just got to play Sephiroth in half the stage. I went through and I beat all three difficulties and one of the things that was initially part of the plan for the Sephiroth challenge was to have 
you only be able to do the unlock if you could beat it on very hard. And I tell you, very hard actually did live up to its name of being very hard. But uh, in the end, the team decided to go against that idea, which I can see, but at the same time, I also would still maintain it was kind of sad, because honestly, it was very hard. It was a really good challenge. Like, it took me well over 20 tries to beat it. Um, but, you know, in the end, I got to play Sephiroth early, and that's all that was what was cool about it. And I'm sad because it was a limited time mode for basically a week, and then it was over with and done and never seen from again. But I am here to tell you that that does not have to be the case, kind of. Because, like I said, all, it was, all that the Sephiroth challenge was was a one-on-one -on -one fight with Sephiroth on the Northern Cave stage. And it was a stamina battle. So all you need to do, I mean, you can't recreate the easy and you can't recreate the very hard difficulties of it. But you can at least try to remake the normal level difficulty by going into your basic smash and creating new rules of a st for a stamina battle called the Sephiroth Challenge, where you both start at 150 HP, you do it one-on-one, -on -one, you against Sephiroth in the Northern Cave for a single stock. And there you go, that's the Sephiroth Challenge. So those of you that did miss out on it can still play it. Technically, you just don't get all of the extra cool like UI and menu things, and you don't get to live this neat like six-day event, this like little teeny tiny piece of Smash Brothers history. So that covers the characters. The last thing I want to talk about is a bit of controversy. Bum bum bum. So even though it's 2021, there's still the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, which means there's a lot of things in the world that aren't happening right now, which I'm sure people want to have happening. And I totally understand that because there's things that I want to see happening in the world and I'm sad that they can't happen. <laughs> uh, I need a drink. Literally. Because <laughs> my voice is starting to get going here. So one of those things that can't really happen are Smash Brothers tournaments, including big ones such as the Big House. Now this is something that I don't... Honestly, the facts out there about the tournament itself are so small, unless you've actually followed it, that, like, I just, I'm not even going to link anything here, because I just, I don't, there's not a ton I know about it, as far as the tournament itself, as far as the entire incident, but all I have to say about it is that it's, the whole reaction to it is silly and i hate being the person who says this because if there's anything i like going after it's giant corporations including ones that i like like i love nintendo games but this is an instance where it wasn't worth it so the the the, the basic synopsis of this is the folks who put on this tournament um, they wanted to do a Smash Brothers Ultimate portion of the tournament, and they wanted to do a Super Smash Brothers Melee portion for the tournament for 2020. Now, like I said, they can't really meet in person because they don't want people to die because they came to play in a Smash tournament, <laughs> even if they are mostly young people. Um, and that would be fine for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because it is compatible with online play. Not so much for Melee, because it's not compatible with online play, but somebody has created a mod for the game, I believe it's called the Slippy uh, mod, which essentially makes Melee playable online on a PC, and Nintendo came down with the ban hammer and said, no, we don't want that. And, you know, ultimately, it is their game, so they get to make that decision. Like, the thing that I compare it to would be like, um, it would be like if you ran an independent theater and said, you know, to Disney, I want to do, I want to screen, uh, you know, a certain movie of theirs. Uh, I don't know. Just pick any random Disney movie. And certain cuts of the movie you'll find, sometimes there are different versions of a film. Like sometimes like when it gets put on, like when a film was put on VHS back in the 80s or the 90s, or then when it was put on DVD later on, or when it's put on TV, sometimes missing certain scenes, or it's edited in different ways for like making it compatible with FCC regulations on TV, or, or just because they wanted to make the cut shorter, or if it was a director's cut or something, you know. And you said, well, but we don't want to put on the official Disney-approved version of the movie. We want to put on the, uh, we want to put on our own cut that we made that, you know, is all of your work, 
but we've just put in the version, like, we've put in extra bits from each version. Now, I should clarify here, if you want to do that on your own, if you want to make your own cut of a movie and have that be your own version of it that includes everything that you want in it, I don't care if you do that on your own personal time. Just the same as if, you know, I wanted to, if anyone wants to play Melee online right now in, their own, in the comfort of their own home, and they want to use the Slippy mod to play online with people, I don't really care, and I don't think Nintendo should care. Just like how I would say Disney really shouldn't care if you've made their own cut for uh, one of their movies. The difference with the big house and in this hypothetical example I gave is that now you're making it a big public thing, right? And if I were Nintendo, I would not want to have a big public event, even if we're not officially associated with it, uh, where the version of the game being played is essentially an unofficial, cracked version of an already existing official game. And I get where people are coming from when they're saying, well, this would be a great reason for Nintendo re to re-release Melee uh, in the modern day. And I completely agree. They should re-release -re Melee for the modern day because... Then they wouldn't have. Then there wouldn't have to have been this whole situation in the first place, right? So you know the onus in this is still on Nintendo to fix this situation, but at the same time, I also cannot be too uh, you know mad at them as far as like their response to it because I don't think it's un an, un an unreasonable thing to say that there's a global pandemic and we don't want people to get sick. So if the worst case scenario is not being able to play Melee in tournaments for one to two years, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I'm sure if you describe this whole situation to someone who's really outside of the gaming community, they would probably say the same thing. Or they would even say that these people are ridiculous for thinking that um, this is like a super big thing to make a big stink about. And then to add fuel to the fire... Um, not too long after that, so, like, Nintendo sometimes does these, like, online open tournaments every month, so, like, there was, there's been Mario Kart ones, there have been, uh, Mario Tennis Aces ones, there have been, well, Smash Brothers ones, uh, but for that month, it was a, there was a Splatoon 2 tournament in which one of the teams changed their name to the hashtag free melee, which was this big thing going around at the time, and was just permeating presentation after presentation like it was a big thing during the sephiroth presentation even though you know it was a pre-recorded video so no one was seeing it anyway duh um and you know fortunately in the months after that this whole thing has just kind of died down because you know kind of like i was saying at the start like when this whole thing was coming out or during other bits there's so or with the 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 direct uh segment from the last podcast right there are so many other things happening in the world that I care more about right now than the fact that people cannot play Super Smash Brothers Melee online. And, you know, whether they like it or not, that's just kind of the, the deal right now. And it's sad. And, again, I would put the onus on Nintendo to put Melee out there in some way and make it compatible with playing online. Like, this would be a fantastic reason to get Nintendo 64 and, more importantly, GameCube Switch Online running to let you play four-player Melee online with your friends. Because that's all they need to do this, is get people on their friends list and play Melee online using that sort of service, even though I know people are all up in arms about it. And again, Switch Online will get its own segment in one of these podcasts. So... Uh, that should cover everything necessary for the, uh, Smash Brothers Roundup. It had really big highs and really big lows here, and it's, it's just kind of frustrating. <laughs>